Hi, I'm Joan Graham, your guide to sharing the universe. Our series of outreach training videos produced by the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. In this episode, how to get a wow when you're not showing Saturn. We'll talk about the challenges you face when trying to get visitors excited about the night sky. As an astronomy enthusiast, you might know how to use a telescope and navigate the night sky. You probably know a lot of the constellations, can find many of the Messier objects and know what they are. Many amateur astronomers want to share their excitement for astronomy, but they don't know what to say. And the universe can't tell its own story. You've seen how amazed visitors are when they look at Saturn through a scope. Did you know you can get the same wow even from faint fuzzies if you provide your visitor with a personal connection to the night sky? This episode will show you some techniques and most importantly, point you to the resources you can use to give the universe a voice. First, let's hear what amateur astronomers have to say about the challenge of getting the wow into public outreach. Sometimes when I'm talking to an audience, I see people nodding off, snoring even. It's embarrassing. If it's cloudy, I don't have anything to show them. There's nothing to do. Everyone goes home disappointed. I set up my scope and show them nebulae and star clusters and double stars and galaxies. But visitors aren't impressed. I don't get it. Why can't they get as excited as I do? Fear not, amateur astronomers. We're going to show you how to excite your visitors about the night sky every time. First, let's look at why things go wrong when you use language that's unfamiliar to your audience. What are you looking at? Oh, this is M57, the Ring Nebula. It's a planetary nebula in the constellation of Lyra between Beta and Gamma. It's about 2,000 light years away. It surrounds a white dwarf. M57 is about one arc minute across with a visual magnitude of about nine, so we need a telescope to see it. Wanna see? See what, a planet? Uh-oh, he gave the visitor an answer, but sadly, the visitor was totally lost. Arc minutes, M57? Planetary nebula? You won't wow your audience with jargon they don't understand. You need to tell a story related to something they already know and give them a personal connection to the night sky. This episode gives you a few stories you can tell, and the Night Sky Network website is a source for many more. Wow your visitors every time and provide them with a starting point for further exploration, all without using words like arc minute, messier, or even magnitude. For example, Let's say you're showing M45, the Pleiades star cluster. You could say, those stars are so young, they weren't even there when the dinosaurs first roamed the Earth. Or if you're a comedian and showing M13, the globular cluster in Hercules, you could say, it's like a retirement community in Hollywood where all the stars are old. There are loads of ways to engage your visitors with stories of the night sky and give them a deeper appreciation of what they're looking at. You can find more ideas at the Night Sky Network website. The Night Sky Network offers stories to use at the telescope, tips to help your visitor better appreciate a night of observing, a variety of star maps that tell a story. This one shows the stars likely to go supernova. This one shows some of the stars that have orbiting planets, demonstrations and activities like why the moon has phases or how telescopes work, models to better understand sizes and distances, handouts, like Lives of the Stars. Many of these resources are accompanied by short training videos so you can see the activity in action. You don't even have to read a manual. They're designed to get you out there, inspiring visitors right away. Remember, the key is to tell a story. Are you convinced yet? I hope so. Let's go check on our amateur astronomer and see how he's using his newfound tools. Take a look, tell me what you see. Uh, a few stars and a little smoky circle. What's that? That's the remains of a star like our sun. It's what the sun might turn into in a few billion years. Really? Wow, how does that happen? As a star cools down at the end of its life, it's dying. It goes through a stage where it starts losing its outer atmosphere. Whoosh! The material coming off forms a thin cloud. That's called a nebula. It's all around the star. Here's a handout that describes the life cycle of stars. Uh, this is the stage we're looking at. It's near the end of a star's life. Wow. Uh, check the next telescope. She's looking at a star nursery. 
That's another kind of nebula. It's a cloud of gas and dust where stars are forming at the beginning of a star's life. Truly amazing. He used ideas and a handout from the Night Sky Network to translate his vast astronomical knowledge into a story that the public can easily understand. He engaged them with the story of a star's life, connecting it with the sun, something the visitor is already familiar with. Stories, hands-on activities, and discussion ideas are all available from the Night Sky Network website. Try these out to spark your visitor's interest, expand your repertoire of outreach tools, and establish a common level of understanding before offering them more in-depth details. You'll never put your audience to sleep again. Let's hear about how amateur astronomers use props and stories to enhance their presentations. We use uh just pull parts of night sky network kits out. So when I'm discussing um, exoplanets and star wobbles, I pull out the little styrofoam ball with a weight on the end that simulates a planet going around and they can see that wobble. You're talking to the king of astronomy props. I have a whole van, not a minivan, but a van full of astronomy props. The little CD-ROMs, the flat, round things, make great models for the Milky Way. You can say, okay, now, Look up there. See, there's the plane of the Milky Way. There's the thin part. When you're using props, the kids can actually see it. And there's nothing like seeing it. And it, it makes such a powerful impact. It's very, very memorable. The Night Sky Network provides engaging activities and ideas for stories that give you the ability to wow your visitors, even when you don't have Saturn in the eyepiece. Visit astrosociety.org slash sharing the universe. And be sure to check out the full set of Sharing the Universe outreach training videos for more tips on public outreach. Thanks for listening. It's a calm and cloudless night. Come outside with me tonight, and I can show you wonders of the world to surprise and delight. I've got my telescope with me. Just wait until you see. We'll stand on the shoulders of giants. That Copernicus was right. Come outside with me tonight, and I can show you wonders of the world to surprise and delight. I've got my telescope with me. Just wait until you see. We'll stand on the shoulders of giants. Stand on the shoulders of giants.